distressed dairy farm. Farmers march in London. It's still selling milk, still money coming in. James, I will start with you. Just tell me, um, you know, why have we got these guys in front of us? Yeah, so Lydia, uh, at the start of last year, I was uh, visiting the UK for a leadership course, and and while I was over there, we'd we'd previously done. Uh, had done a summit on on trying to empower the beef industry in Australia. While we were there, we came across the dairy industry, which is uh, exiting four dairy farmers a week. So hence we uh, we staged a summit uh, in November last year and built a a, a case study around a, uh, a I suppose a distressed dairy farm, an average dairy farm over there. Presented to CEOs and. Uh, political leaders, uh, business leaders. The event pretty much exploded and as a result we um, we uh, gave prizes out for the best um, entry to empower that case study. So whoever could come up with a solution to make that distressed dairy farm um, sort of uh, prosper and uh, and more profitable, um, they, were, uh, they were exposed to a competition where they could win return trips to the outback. So we got a lot of uh, interest and, uh, and this is the result we've got. Uh, two entries, uh, a joint entry from from uh, uh, Stuart and Tom, and then a, a single entry from from Paul. Uh, we're touring all the sort of Western Queensland, having a look at all the agri tourism, but also all the all the production systems here, and just showing them the challenges of the drought. We just met with uh, our, our local mayor Ed Ed Warren, and then uh, yeah, and then we we head down to um, Brisbane to have a look at some dairy farms early next week. Stuart, I'll come to you. I imagine drought looks pretty different in the UK. What's been your impression of Western Queensland? Um, I think it's probably the just the scale of the farms, the numbers involved. Um, a drought or, or situation in the UK would probably last for a, a few weeks or a couple of months, but to come into a scale of the size of the land and the, the period where it's sort of two, three years now, and then looking where it's going to be a, another year, two years before there's any money starting coming back into the businesses is just a... A completely new idea. Um, what were you hoping to get out of your trip? I think it was to try and pick up some ideas with how a, a different system or a different model deals with disaster or, or some sort of stress on the business. The way it's a different system over here, it, they have to deal with things in a different manner and it's trying to take a, a comparable from here and applying it to a different situation. So whereas price might have crashed in the UK in the dairy industry, it's um, there's you're still selling milk and there's still money coming in. So it's changing your your business model day to day whereas here once the, the cows have gone and they're de-stocked there's nothing coming in for a few years so you can't tweak your business model data you can't trim costs it's, it's all gone it's just waiting for the rain. Tom I'll come to you what's been your impression of Western Queensland? Um, on the farming side uh, obviously really really dry to uh, state the obvious vast big numbers you know a lot bigger than you'd ever get in the UK so it's been a real eye-opener and um, the stations that we've been to have been, you know, fantastic. The people have been great with us and, you know, they've been very open and honest, which has made it, you know, really beneficial. What are some of the key things that you think you'll take away from this trip? Um, for me, uh, the farmers in Queensland have to be very agile, uh, sort of de-stocking and, you know, being really frank with the feed that they've got. And, you know, they if they hang around, they lose money, so they're agile and they make a quick decision and, you know, get out. So yes, yeah, so it's probably the agility. Maybe people in England are a little bit more overcommitted. It's taking a little bit, little bit longer to extract. Was there anything that, that you can see that Western Queensland's beef industry could adopt that, that's done well in the UK's dairy industry? Um, I think uh, the UK dairy industry has really looked into sort of utilising sort of solar panels and trying to sort of find areas that they can make savings on and they've done really well in energy especially with sort of anaerobic digesters and solar panels. I know there's a bit, some guys are starting to get into solar, but I think there might be a bit of an opportunity there, you know, try and cut out one of their major fixed costs. Do you think there should be more partnership between the two countries' agricultural industries? Yeah, I think uh, what James is doing is, is really breaking new ground and I, th I think it's going to do fantastic things, you know, for the industry. And I, I'm sure it's going to be the start of something really big. So it's, it's great to be sort of out here. I think one thing we do we do quite well in the UK is probably cost of production and really drilling down and, and benchmarking and comparing those businesses across across the UK. It's probably slightly easier on the UK because the, there's going to be less variation ac across the sectors and it's less weather dependent. Um, and although when we've been going around seeing guys and talking to them, they're aware of costs, but it, I know the scales are slightly larger in terms of head of cattle, but I think there's probably a, seems to be a less of awareness of 
of what things actually cost you or the benefits of one system compared to another. So when sort of looking at organic and conventional, people say, well, um, they talk about savings and not feeding supplements and urea and bits and pieces, but it doesn't seem that, that anybody really quantifies that. Um, so maybe, I mean, maybe guys are doing it and probably the, the top producers are, but I think ac across the UK now more and more producers are, are benchmarking, really drilling down and looking at it on a quarterly or six monthly, definitely a sort of an annual basis and looking where you can make small improvements. So we're not looking at trimming sort of pennies of pennies a litre of savings, it might be sort of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 pence a litre, but if you can trim that in four or five places, all of a sudden you've taken a penny and a half off your, your cost of production. And so if you could do a comparable with per kilo of beef, or whether it's just increasing your stocking rate by marginally, and, and that all compounds up, especially when you're looking at the, the size of the systems here, it should deliver some, some big savings and benefits. Um, so Paul... Um, as you've been visiting Queensland, you know, a dairy crisis, as many have call it, are calling it, uh, has unfolded in, in Australia. What's been your take on what's happening in, in Australia's dairy industry? I think it's very similar worldwide. Everyone's struggling with the milk price, but what we've seen in, in Australia recently mirrors what happened in the UK last year. One of our dairy processors announced that they'd overpaid for their milk and they decided not to pay us for two weeks' milk. So it's just... It's similar, we're all struggling, but what we've seen in Australia this last fortnight is particularly but bad. Currently in Australia, you know, there's been reports of, of dairy farmers receiving as little as 14 cents per litre. What's your take on that? I don't know how they do it, keeping producing at that price. I know certainly that converts to seven pence per litre in our terms, which is totally unsustainable in the long term. You might be able to do it for a couple of months short term, but long term you're going to just eat into your your assets, you're going to have basically re mortgage. I just feel for the farmers on that. So at the moment, there's plenty of uh, dairy farmers saying that, that that's it, they'll just have to walk away from the industry. Did that sort of thing happen in, in the UK? It happened in the UK and we're still seeing it happen. There's continuous exodus of the industry. The Farmers Guardian, which is our national farming newspaper each week, is continually full of dispersal sales. Cull cow numbers have risen. And we're starting to see the impact of that in the UK with dairy production slowly starting to drop. So hopefully we might see price stabilisation within the next couple of months. This has been going on for over 12 months in the UK. Can you? Is there any hope that you can give to Australian dairy farmers? I think we've, what we've seen these last couple of weeks from our time in Australia is the resilience the Australian farmer has. Just a case of putting your head down and trying to cut your costs where you can, try and get food to the other side. Do you see a future in the dairy industry in the UK and globally? What we've seen this last 18 months has been a sudden price drop which followed a considerable rise. Hopefully that volatility is going to continue and we'll see a price rise coming soon, hopefully higher than last time. But I think it's something as an industry we're going to have to try and get to grips with and look at ways of managing it so that we're saving the good times, ready for the bad times. In one of Australia's largest uh, supermarkets, they were selling milk for a dollar a litre. Is there anything like that in, in the UK? Yeah, there's been a, a lot of coverage, um, what would they be, 50p a litre, and there's probably comparisons with, um, with discounters offering, offering very cheap milk, um, where they, and there's been a lot of negative press where, whereby they've, um, they're selling it for less than the cost of, cost of production. But in... In sort of response to that, some of the supermarkets have, have offered a, a premium price to to uh, to the dairy farmers through offering a, a higher priced milk that's labelled as a as we're we're selling selling this at 10p more than our standard standard milk per litre, and that extra 10p is going straight back to the farmers, and that was sort of fairly well publicised at the start, and the milk was flying off the shelves, showing that in the UK that consumers are happy to pay a little bit more for the milk. Um, but there's certainly an appetite, I think, within the, the UK market to support dairy farmers. Are dairy farmers in the UK subsidised by the government? The, as in the EU, we, each dairy farmer received a payment last year. Each individual European government picked how they wanted the money to be distributed. We also receive our single farm payment. So we are subsidised in a way, but we also have extra regulation to cope with. Has it helped? It certainly helped, but it was a drop in the ocean when you consider the milk price drop. It's something that Australia could look at. 
I don't know how supportive the Australian government is of the producers. It's one of the parts that the the UK is lucky with being in the EU. We got that money. I'm not sure whether our government would do it. I have doubts whether our government would help us that, that way. Can you can you learn things from uh, the beef industry in Western Queensland to take back and apply to the dairy industry in the UK? Yeah, I think there's definitely um, I think an attitude of the farmers here. Um, there's a certain sort of resilience and it's a, it's a mindset that, that they know that potentially there's a drought coming or they can see it with, with weather and it's, it's preparing yourself to deal with that. Whereas the, the price cuts might not have been expected to come as quickly as they did or as harshly as they did. It's probably a temptation when profits are good in the UK to plow into new kit or to, to splash the cash. What we've picked up here is it's in the, in the good times, it's sort of putting the cash away for the bad times that you know, that you know they're going to come, it's sort of when not if. Um, and it's probably that, that mindset and attitude that you could take back to the dairy industry.